Hi, everyone. Welcome to See the Lighthouse AI Digital Twin Course. I'm Eileen, a data scientist in CEDA in the AI Digital Twin project. And this course is designed to provide you with a comprehensive understanding of AIDT and like its applications and its impact across various industries. First, let me pass to Ali Riza, our CEDA Lighthouse project leader, and he's here to give you a, a brief introduction. Thanks, Ali Riza. Thank you very much, Yulin. Hello, everybody. This is Ali Riza. Like you said, I'm uh, with my colleague Yilin and Rupesh, we are leading the Lighthouse projects. So as you may know already in any of the Lighthouse project, we do a lot of activities, including creating contents, uh, technical demonstrators, meetups, one-on-one -on -one meetings, and so on, and also the courses. One of the interesting part of the Lighthouse project is the course that we develop for each project. Uh, so for the uh, for Lighthouse project, we have developed four courses. Uh, so for the AIDT, AI Digital Twin Lighthouse projects, we decided to do a little bit different and more creative uh, fashion of creating the course. So instead of teaching the, uh, the, the things and items, we decided, Yelin and I, we decided to look at different use cases and go through different aspects of creating, developing digital twins by reviewing the use cases. So... Uh, I hope you'll enjoy the course and you will stay with us through the next three, uh, let's say four. That's for this week and next three weeks. Thank you very much, Yelin. You can start the course if you want. Yes, thank you, Aliriza. And let's begin our course. So today is our first session of the AIDG course. Over the next one hour and in the coming weeks, we will dive into the what is AI digital training and how they are involved and where are they making a significant impact. And throughout the course, we can uh, expect a mix of theoretical knowledge, interactive discussion, and uh, practical insights. Each session will cover different aspects of ADT and uh, develop your own ADT project, which you may want to present in the final week. Yeah. And please join our CEDA ADT community, which I already shared in the email, and also I will share in the chat. We will prepare a range of resources. You will have access to like video, like learning materials, and also uh, our presentation slides and so on. You can find all here. So now let's start our first session. The first topic today is understanding the definition and the in-law version of the AI digital twin. So at first, let's talk about what is digital twin actually. Thinking of like Mm, virtual replica of the physical object like process or service. It's like having a mimic me that's made of the data and can present the real things in the digital world, including the organs, the skin, the cells, and so on. So the digital twin includes all the important information like the structure, the behavior, and the date. Of the physical system, this can also be used to model processing and uh, the service, giving us a better understanding of how they work in the real world. So why do we need to care about this? Well, by um, creating a digital twin, we can monitor the performance of the physical object in the real time and predict any potential issues or the future performance. This information can then be used to support decision making and even simulate process to understand the effect of different decisions. In short, the digital twin help us understand the past, the present, and even predict the future. So let's 
journey back to where it all began. The concept of digital twin can be traced back to NASA early space mission. This was a time when the need for a exact replica of space system on the Earth that's crucial for mission success. Apollo 13, NASA's third manned mission to the moon, faced an un uh, unexpected crisis when an oxygen tank exploded. This endangered the lives of the astronauts and uh, required a immediate and innovative solution. So this is the seminal moment by replicating the conditions of an uh, actual spacecraft on the Earth-based model. Engineers were able to test the solution and guide the astronaut how home safety. This innovative approach led the foundation for what we call the digital twin technology today. And there is an important point I want to clarify that the digital twin is not simple a uh, simulation of the real world. They are detailed informative rich model of the real world. See, simulation can be more generalized and abstract, while digital twin are designed to closely mimic the behavior of a specific physical system. And if we compare simulation to digital twin, we can say that simulation are static and digital twin are dynamic. Simulation are only as good as the parameters and the design elements that are inputted. Once the digital model is created, the parameters don't change unless the designer make change. However, static model only give us information about the specific design. If we want to look at the different design, we need to start from scratch. And for the digital train, this starts off like the simulation, but because it's used real-time data, it's constantly changing and adapting. It is actively looking for, for ways to improve the products through the simulation. It can even simulate the entire product life cycle over time, um, giving the designer information that simple simulation just cannot provide. So digital twin is not the simple simulation. And another point is that many people were confusing the digital model, digital shadow, and the digital twin. Is are all terms used to describe a physical object in a digital format. So let's dive into the three different. So first up, we have the digital model. Think of like a virtual replica of the real world object, but they wasn't directly connect between the digital and the physical world. Validation of the digital model requires a lot of manual data transfer. For example, you create a digital model, build the physical prototype and test it and have to keep updating the digital model until you're happy with the result. Yeah. And next, we have the digital shadow. It will sensor collect data from the physical object and send it straight to the relevant digital shadow. And it can then react to the incoming data and adjust the parameters to match any change in the real world. That's, pre that's pretty cool, yeah. But there is a catch. The occurrence of this prediction depends on the quality of the digital shadow and uh, amount of data being collected. And unfortunately, unfortunately, there are some technical limitations that mean the digital shadow cannot communicate with the physical object in the real time. So finally, we have the digital twin. This is more advanced concept where this is fully automated data flow between the digital and the physical object. 
like change in the state of the physical object directly affect the digital object and vice versa. The digital also emphasize a interactive approach where information flows not only from the digital assets to the physical world, but also back. This requires a clear definition of the stakeholder need and the roles, making it the most complex and challenging situation. So there is a difference between the digital model, digital shadow, and digital twin. You see, without a accurate model of the production system, we can not make the most of our digital twin, but the help of simulation, analyze, data accumulations, and mining, and AI, we can make sure the digital twin is a perfect match for the real physical system. So this is why we need AI. This is the key to make our manufacturing system smarter and more efficient. So let's embrace AI and digital twin and take our production into the next level. Um, AIDT use artificial intelligence to learn and adapt over time, making it even more valuable as the gather more data and experience. With real-time data from sensor and other sources, it can continuous updating and uh, can mo make more accurate prediction. And what's the be best part? AI makes sense of all the data that is can identify the trends and the authors and help with decision making and having a virtual device right there with you, constantly learning and evolving. And this technology can also speed out the design process by providing a simulation environment where designer can quickly test different ideas with a large amount of data. This can train AI and machine learning model to solve some of the challenges we are, we are facing in the real-time system. Yeah, and think about it. If we have a good enough digital twin that simulates most of the relevant aspect of our physical system, we can use the digital tree to generate data and the data can then be used to train our AI model. It's like a never ending circle of improvement. AI digital tree is, is advancing at a rapid space and being applied to a wide range of industry. However, not all AI DT framework are created equally. In, so in the next station, we will explore four types of AIDT framework that have been proposed in the recent years. So the first type of AIDT framework is the 3D DT, which is first introduced by the Michael in his product life cycle management course in 2014. Michael's computer framework consists of three basic components, the physical space, the connection layer, and the vector space. However, while this framework is suitable for some application, like this framework is widely used in the manufacturing industry for the real-time decision-making. However, it has limitation when it comes to open and uh, to the user oriented border application, such as the agriculture, well being, and the medicine, it has lots of limitation. And that's where the second type of digital twin framework comes in the cloud cyber physical system based DT. In this framework, every physical object is automatically accompanied by the presentative digital twin hosted in the cloud. Take a look at this detailed structure diagram. This framework allows for one-to-one -one connection between physical and cyber things. 
where every physical things and its corresponding cyber things manager a data store. However, while this framework is highly efficient, it can be limited by the um, data privacy concern and uh, requires strong network connection. And the third type of AIDT framework is use the intelligent DT. This framework utilizes AI inference engine and uh, data mining technology to capture quantitative and quantitative information in the real time, making it suitable for applications such as healthcare, where the ability to forecast and make the real time decision is is crucial. Yeah, and lots of AI and machine learning is used in this structure to study and predict. The intelligent data is highly adaptable and can learn from the physical object over time, making it an um, attractive option for many applications. And the, finally, we have the industry for AIDT framework, which is a hybrid cloud CPS and AIDT architecture. This framework is focused on the um, advancing smart manufacturing and uh, consists of the communication model that's including the sensory intelligence and the presentations of the train connects through the internet. This is highly adaptable and can be used across range of industries, but it's a little bit complex to implementation. Yep. So let's have a look to the example for the industry for DT framework in the healthcare industry to um, to understand the key components and the architecture of the AIDT framework from a um, integrate part of the um, healthcare innovation. Yeah. And we can see at the top layer, we have the physical interaction layer. This is including medical professionals, patients, and the border healthcare community. Their interaction need and the, uh, the interaction and the need drive the development and use of AIDT in healthcare setting. Below, that's the digital twin layer, which the core components that connect the physical and digital domains. Here we can see the medical app and the AI working together to reflect the physical health process. Data is the lifeblood of the IDT, various data sources, including the health records, sensor data, and the clinical data are fed into the big data storage system. This integration is critical of the next step in processing and analyze. And the heart of the AIDT is, is machine learning. We are here the algorithm learning model and predictive analyze come into the play and process data into the optimized healthcare outcome and optimize the complex test. And finally, the application and the service layer is where the insights gained from AIDT are put into action. This can range from chatbots in customer service to robots, uh, ro robots assisting in patient care or like the lab work. What we are looking at is not just a linear process, but a interconnections ecosystem. The data flow between the um, layers informing and being informed by the AI algorithm, which in turn affect the physical process, creating a continuous loop of the improvement and optimization. Yeah. 
after we have a basic understanding of the structure, let's jump to uncover the possibility of the front end of AIDT. The front end service as the gateway, offering a user friendly interface and a immersive experience. But what truly sets AIDT apart is the seamless integration of these components the front end and the back end. Exchanging the information and uh, working together to create a truly immersive and a powerful digital twin ecosystem. Yeah, now let's turn our attention to the front end of AI digital twin. At this call, the Front-end of AIDT focus on two essential aspects, the user interface, the UI, and the user experience, the UX. The UI includes virtual and uh, interactive elements that allow users to engage with the AI twin. This includes elements such as the dashboard, the visualization, and control pa panel. These components can carefully designed to present complex data and insights in an understandable manner, making it easier for users to monitor and uh, interact with the AIDT. At the same time, the UX focus on the creating the intuitive journey for user as the navigate and interact with the AID twin. UX designer use the principles of the information architecture, interaction, design, and the use ability to ensure the user can access to the desired functional rate, like receive timely feedback and have a satisfying overall experience. So, <clears throat> sorry, let's take a closer look at some example and the possibility of the front end element in AIDT. First, the dashboard are typically used to present real time data, like key performance indicators and alerts in a visualized, appealing, and easy to understand format. Dashboards provide a consolidated view of the key metrics and the insight, enabling users to monitor and analyze real-time data at a guess. Like this picture, we can see the is a AIDT for smart city management that incorporates the dashboard with the which displaying live data on like the energy consumption, traffic flow, and air quality and also the waste management. And the next is the data visualization oriented design. This front end design approach focus on the presenting the complex data in a uh, visually opinion and uh, also is a uh, easily understandable format. And this uh, IDT for like financial analysis that's utilize interactive charts, graphics, and data maps to visualize market trends, uh, like the portfolio performance and the risk analyze. And next is the um, 3D visualization design approach. Let's leverage 3D visualization to provide user with a spatial understanding of the complex data and the relationship. Like these images, this is a AIDT for urban planning that utilizes 3D visualization to showcase city infrastructure, zoning, like uh, regulations and population density, enabling stockholder to assess and plan future city or, or urban development. And this is the AR interface design. 
the digital information into the real world environment to enhance the user perceptible and understanding of the physical world. For example, the front end of a AR-based artificial intelligence used to industry man maintenance allows the technical to use AR device to visualize the real-time equipment data, access the comment, and uh, receive real-time maintenance information. And after talking about AR, that's talking about the virtual reality, the VR. The VR interface immerse users in a virtual environment that allow them to interact with AI digital twin in a simulate and interactive way. Like AR based the front end design of the ADT used in architecture design enable used to walk through the virtual building, like exploring different layouts and modify the design in the real time. And the front end design should be responsive and optimized for um, mobile devices, allowing users to access and interact with the AI digital twin on the smartphones or the tablet. For example, a responsible front end design for ADT, um, like for the industry process in the factory design shop where managers can access industry data, specific parameters change extra in the real time in on a mobile device. Okay, now that we have a basic understanding what AIDT is. So let me give you some real time example for where it's being used you will see like the possibility of the AIDT. First up, the healthcare. With AIDT, medical performance can play surgeries in a whole new way by creating like the 3D models of the patient's body. They can simulate the surgery in a virtual environment and min minimize the risk of the applications. And the AIDT can also be used for like the remote monitoring for of the patient with the chronic conditions with available devices collecting data on a vital signs and another health metrics. Healthcare performance can track the progress and catch potential problems earlier on. And the last but not least, training and uh, education is another area where AIDT can make big impact. Medical student can, and healthcare performers can now use virtual patients to simulate a wide range of medical scenarios providing a realistic and safe environment for the um, practical. And the banking and finance industry is also taking advantage of AIDT in multiple ways. When it comes to uh, like risk management, AIDT can create a virtual representation of the bank's portfolio of the asset allowing for simulation and the stress test to identify any potential risk or the vulnerability. This proactive approach helps banks take measure to address these concerns. And more is of, uh, for the financial companies are standing to see the efficiency of the digital online process and the power of AI technology to automate everyday tasks like funding check, transfer check, and uh, police generation. This means that AIDT can play a big role in improve the financial and banking service infrastructure. And also 
we already see how can involve and uh, to the healthcare and the finance industry, but the potential is not stop here. Let's in, in introduce the smart city. Let's start with the building management and maintenance. With the digital twin, building management can actually see how the heating, cooling, uh, electrical and the pumping system can behave. And it can help catch and uh, fix the problem before they turn to real emergency and uh, save them, save on the maintenance cost too. And when it comes to energy efficient, the air digital train is like a smart energy advisor. It analyzes data from the sensor and the weather forecast to help optimize energy usage. Plus, it can even help building owners to discover energy saving opportunities by simulating the different scenario. And the last traffic management. The ADT also can use the real time data from the sensors and camera to predict, predict traffic flow and reduce the congestion, no more sitting in the traffic for hours on the end. So let me, in conclusion, the AI digital twin can have a significant impact on the operation and the management of our city. So by creating the digital replica, we can optimize performance, reduce the cost and improve the overall sustainability and the livability of our city. But it still have the limitation. One major challenge is ensuring that the data used to create and update the digital twin is accurate and up to date. Particularly in industries such as healthcare and manufacturing where data is often spread, spread across different systems and may be in constantly. And another limitation is that while digital twin technology can simulate and model different scenario, it cannot replace actual physical testing. It's in many cases, physical testing is still necessary to validate the result of the simulation. And don't forget for forgot the Integration. Integration at the train with the existing system and uh, processing can be difficult, especially for organizations that have legacy system that may not easily integrate with new technology. Like with AIDT technology is still being relatively new. Different vendor and uh, organizations may have different standards and uh, like the protocols for creating and maintaining the digital twin, making it challenging to share and use digital twin across different systems and organizations. But also there are some limitations. We can see the future of the ADT is still brand. We are seeing the technology rap rapidly advancing and making the big impact across the different industry. Yeah. And now we have a comprehensive understanding of what it means to have a zero twin. Let's dive into how to build our own AIDT from scratch. The first step is establish of the objective, like understanding the requirements and challenging ADT development is the foundation of any successful ADT project. It is the compass that guides the entire development process. In the field of ADT de deployment, um, clarity, the purpose is essential. 
it is not just about building a digital twin, it's about crafting a solution that address real world challenges. So every journey begins with a destination in mind. In IDT development, this is translate to the problem statement or business need. So what's the gap or the challenge are we aiming to bridge with our digital twin? Like, like in the manufacturing sector, there are unexpandable machine breakdown that can lead to costly downtimes. So what is the challenge for the manufacturing sector is to predict and preventing this disrupt before they occur. And for the urban planning and the transformation, the urban planners grapple with optimizing traffic flow with uh, growing urban populations. The challenge is to ensure smooth transportation while minimize congestion and reducing the commute times. So in health, like in healthcare, the timely patient care is crucial. Challenges range from the real-time health monitoring to ensure the essential medical supplies are always in stock. Yeah. And also even like the agri agriculture faced the challenges of optimizing crop production, ensuring consistency in irrigation and the crop health became difficult in the face of unpredictable weather patterns and, and the equipment val values. And even for the retail, both physical and digital is struggling to achieve a seamless customer experience. Challenges including managing install traffic, ensure online platforms are functionally and uh, the participating inventory needs. And like for the energy provider, ensure a sustainable power supply is the main challenge. The stakers are high from um, predicting equipment failures to managing peak demand time. So while this Cross industry challenge may seem difficult. That's the AIDT really shy. Like in the manufacturing, AIDT can predict wear and tears on machine and schedule repairs before breakdown occur. Like in the urban planning, this can simulate traffic pan pa patterns to optimize light lean times and reduce congestion. And healthcare facility can be benefit from real time monitoring of patients, predicting health patterns, and ensure timely intervention. And like in agriculture, AIDT can monitor soil health, weather pattern, and uh, irrigation system to ensure optimal crop yield. And like for the retailers can use to simulate customer traffic, manage inventory, and enhance the online shopping experience. Like um, last for the energy sector, AIDT can predict equipment failure and optimize power disruption based on the demand pattern. In short, for every challenge, AIDT de delivers intelligent data-drive solution that can revolution the way industry open rates and growth. So with the clear understanding of the requirements and challenges in the place, the next step in IDT development is defining objective. This is the compass that ensure our journey is purposeful and directed. Like, like 
every ADT project need to a uh, clear destination. So what we aim to achieve is this reflection of the challenge at the hand and the desire transformation. Whether the goal is to in enhance predictive maintenance in manufacturing, streamline traffic in urban centers, or personalize patient care, is a is is a step by step ascent. Each goal is stepping stones to AIDT success. And also the goal is not only is is only the beginning. We must have the visualize the desired outcomes. How will our AIDT change the current situation? What real benefit will it bring? This vision will guide the development process, ensure that AIDT delivers real value. Like with any, any project measurement is key. So how will we measure the success of the AIDT through key performance indicators? These metrics, whether they related to the accuracy, efficiency, and user satisfaction, provide the coachable benchmarks. Um, through these metrics, we can evaluate AIDT's performance, refine this functionality, and ensure that meets our um, goals. And defining goals is more than just setting a target. It's about versionize the feature well, which the challenge will go, and uh, we need to overcome and to process optimized. And with the clear goal, the journey of the ATT has the purpose and the hope. So to conclude today's course, let's look ahead an uh, exciting journey into the world of AIDT. Our course structure is designed to maximize interaction and uh, hands-on learning. You will find that our focus on applying concepts through the real-world use case will bring the theory of the AIDT to life. And we don't want to bother you with a lot of technical fund foundations, things, extra. And um, in this course, and make it more, we want to make it more interactive and uh, fun for you during the next few se session. We will go through different use case and uh, through this use case, we will explain to you what's the different aspect of to developing a uh, AIDT. So this hands-on work, we, are, we will encourage you to apply what we have learned to develop the innovative solution to the challenge we will discuss. So these are ideas for bring, building your own ADT, like the for the healthcare, like building the hospital resource management training and uh, for the urban and regional planning to building the urban transportation twin and uh, for the software development is to building the life cycle twin like for AI for marketing is can to prediction the customer behavior twin. So that's this the content for today's today's course. That's let me pass to Alriza to discuss what's the next AIDT project. Yeah, thank you very much, Yilin, for your interesting and beautiful presentation. Of course, it is uh, the outcome of several months of studying 
learning uh, and disseminating of different kind of contents and technical demonstrator in the Lighthouse project. Uh, like Lilin mentioned in the course, we are trying without, we started thinking to design the course in a different way. So one of the aspects that the course would be different is uh, in the first, in the next three weeks, actually, Elin and I, we will go through different use cases in more details. In, the, in this session, it was kind of introductory, a lot of uh, different aspects of what is digital twin, why should we use it, and so on, the limitation, etc. But for the next three sessions, it would be use cases. We review them uh, with details, in details, and actually... We will highlight all different interesting aspects we need to consider while we want to develop any digital twin. Apart from that, we decided to define some sort of the project work, etc., to develop a digital twin, not technically, like Helen mentioned, but to design the concept. I mean, what is the uh, objective of this digital twin? Specifically, for example, imagine someone or a group of the attendants in the class, they want to develop their digital twin day project work around the hospital rescue management twin, okay? So we can start with what is the objective of this, what a specific problem we want to focus on that, what about the data, what we bring the data, what we host the data, uh, what is the kind of the front end of that AI digital twin, what about the back end of digital twin, how they are integrated to each other and so on, okay? so. Along the course, while we review all these aspects of developing a digital twin, uh, you will have the opportunity in the course to work on the project you are selecting and uh, developing your digital twin. And of course, in the last session of the course, which would be the Friday in next three weeks, the last session, session number five, you will have the opportunity to present your work. And that would be really interesting to see how, uh, what, uh, I think what kind of the things we have done in each project. But we decided to make it a little bit more uh, democratic way. <laughs> so I think Elin has designed kind of a, a quiz, quick quiz. If you can share the link of the quiz into the uh, chatbot for, for the attendance, please participate answering the question to see what is your preference. And accordingly, we will do uh, so. Have you shared the link, Yelin, in the chat? Yeah, I shared in the screen. You can. can so you, you, need to, you need to create a link and share it in the chat. Then people can open it in the, uh, they, you can sh keep it shared. That's fine. But uh, yeah, maybe you can scan the QR code uh, that you had there. So do, 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 not show the result. Yes, if you can scan the QR code on your on the screen or something like that, you can open the same page on your screen, and uh, then you can answer the question. Yes, that's the first time I think you are using the VBox in the chat, so it is a little bit inconvenience thing that's happening. Sorry about that. So let me see if I can. Help. Yeah, it looks like people already have started answering the questions. So, do, 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 do. click on here, copy session ID, put it into the chat. That's the ID. I paste it in the chat. And yeah, okay. 10, 10 people already replied the question 11 out of 17 people that you are in the room so go ahead guys and then Helen would be able to show you what is the answer okay okay 12 people a little bit more time there are still a few people to reply the question we want to do homework <laughs> that's a very simple question <laughs> and uh, I think Helen you can show the answer yes let me uh, to uh, see yeah. how many percent they have said show results. Oh. The, the one in the you can see can see that in there. Yeah, be, beside there, yeah. Yeah, again if you share it, yes, present the screen. Okay, it looks like uh, sixty percent of the people are interested in doing the homework. 
which is very good. <laughs> and 38% diastium, perhaps they are busy. Uh, I would say you it won't take too much of your time for sure. Uh, but we'll explain to you what is our strategy for the homeworks. It is not really complicated. Okay, can you show the second question, Ilin, please? Yes, let me. Maybe you can close the poll. What is that arrow in the button? Maybe it goes to the yeah, next one. Yeah, the second. Okay, so do you want to build uh, your own AIDT individually or in a group? That's another interesting question. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, what I can see, you cannot see the answers, but I can see uh, in the backstage, I would say in the website, 10 people answered the question, a little bit more reply, please, if you want to participate in the quiz. Okay, 11, 12 people, okay. A little bit more, 13 people, okay. Okay, Yelin, you can share the results. Okay, not that bad, still the same number of people they prefer to do that in the group. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Let's jump to the last question. 14 people, okay, very good. And the last question is, if you click on that, Yelin, I think. Yes, yes, wait a minute, yeah, that's one, this one. Yeah. Okay, do you want to have a mixture team of people from different industries or from the same industry? Okay, okay. Interesting answers, <laughs> very beautiful. Okay, the first option is, yeah, from the different industry from, okay, good, people from uh, different industry, same industry, they have more interest in doing the project together. Okay, great, thank you very much for participating in the quiz. Even if you can come back to the project slides. Okay. Stop sharing this and coming back to the slides and the, the slides that we had the projects. Okay, so I think it was the very last slide, I would say. Yes, yes. please give me a... Yeah, sure. So like I said, we came up with four topics from different industries. The first one is in the healthcare, hospital, resource management, twin, of course, if that's your choice, then you can uh, niche it down a little bit to a specific topic. The second one is urban transportation twin. Again, the topic is too general. For example, you can select the bus transportation in, in Dublin, a digital twin for bus transportation, which is really interesting. If you go to next slide, Gillian, please. Um, yeah, software life, life cycle twin, which is very interesting. Uh, we tried to come up with the ideas, different ideas related to the industry members of CDAR activity, you know, and the last one is custom, consumer behavior prediction. So we have four topics. What we have in mind is, okay, so we'll try to make groups of people from the same industry, and then uh, we will provide you with the opportunity to select your topic. It is okay. Multiple groups select the same topic. It doesn't need necessarily... If a group have selected already consumer behavior prediction, the others cannot know, that's fine. And then we will share with you a spreadsheet. All the team members will have access to that spreadsheet and we put in front of you a list of questions. And then in the box, you can make your answers there. And those questions would be all the necessary elements to design an AI digital twin from A to Z. And like I said, over the three, Next week, we will discuss, we will uh, actually discuss all the necessary aspects you need to consider to design an AI digital twin. So all this, this discussion will help you. And so team members, they can, if you want, you can meet sometimes you, together or you can work in, asynchronously on the spreadsheet. If you have any question from Yelena and me, you can mention us and ask the question and so on. I think that's the uh, half the lightest weight approach to do some homeworks. It will increase the earning and learning from this course. I hope so. If you have any question regarding this session and anything else, please let us know. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you also can join the ADC community 
Please feel free to share your ideas and your questions in the community. No question? Seems like everything has been clear. Okay, so we have a question in the chat. Uh, is latency an issue? And if so, what strategies or technology are being ex explored to minimize the latency in order to ensure real-time or near real-time synchronization between the digital twin and the physical object? That's a very good question, uh, Aldridge. So actually, as Yilin highlighted, the difference between digital twin and digital copy and simulation, et cetera, is the real-time exchange of the data. That real-time exchange of the data doesn't mean necessarily a very high rate of exchange of data. It might be the exchange of data every few hours, every uh, per, once per day, once per couple of days. That's up to the process you are developing a digital twin for that. But it should be timely. I mean, if the rate of the data exchange is really high, you need to be really very close to real time. And the infrastructure for the data exchange, for the data storage and so on, is the solution to solve that problem. But you necessarily, you need to think about that problem to how to solve it. If, for example, if you want to predict a kind of the maintenance period in, inside the factory, if the data is old, so what does it mean? What is what is the backend AI you are doing on that data to generate some insight in the front end of your AI digital twin? It doesn't make sense that much. Or if it is in the healthcare, if you are using the data from the real phenomena to do something in the backend of your AI digital twin, to model it, to do a predictive analysis, to do something like that, and then to monitor it to the patient, to the doctors, to everybody involved in that situation if the data is really late and old so it doesn't make sense what you are doing in your ai digital team so there's definitely latency is an issue and you need to be careful to handle your data exchange in a good way uh, can we use adt in stock market like for prediction or analyzing companies asset and will it be possible to modify digital twin to reflect changes in the physical counterpart like if you would be feeling uh, feeding real-time uh, data to model of course it is possible like Elin mentioned it is uh, definitely possible to implement that see digital twin is a little bit misleading when you hear about that so can you let me change the question can you apply AI and machine learning to stock market the answer perhaps is yes so then yes, it is possible to develop digital twin for that problem. But what is the difference between AI digital twin and uh, AI and machine learning? That AI and machine learning is the backend part of your AI digital twin. And then that's up to you. What is the best way to reflect whatever you are doing in the backend using AI and machine learning in your front end? Is it like a dashboard? Is it like you want to send the result to the uh, physical phenomena to make any decision to as a comment or something like that. So definitely it is possible to do that. Uh, Pramod, you want to ask your question? You have raised your hand. Yeah, yes. I'm sorry, I'm too lazy to type, so I thought I'll speak out. Yeah, so um, from what I've um, understood so far, um, thanks for the great presentation, by the way, um, the digital twin seem like to me seem like a singularity kind of thing where you have a twin of a real physical body um my question was more towards can we have uh, digital twins like plural um for example i mean to be very specific let's say in the healthcare industry we have five uh, subjects undergoing some specific tests let's say for covid vaccine or something now I want to have five different uh, models and then get the result out of that, sort of a collective result. Is it possible or is it always like sort of one-to-one on one, -to -one, or is it more complex? That's a very good question. So 
that's up to you. What is the objective of the digital twin you are developing? I mean, for example, in the healthcare you mentioned, it would be possible to develop an AI digital twin for uh, drug discovery. Yeah, yeah. Let's say there is a drug, and I want to test with. Um, uh, let's take a realistic example. There are hundreds of subjects, and they all have different conditions: uh, the age, sex, um, you know, the height, weight. They're all different, and they all get the same drug. Um, they all have a different uh, digital twin model in the system. Now, I want to see, like, collectively get the picture of how the drug performs. Um, it may not perform exactly the same with everybody, um, depending on age, sex, and all that. But um, I want to get the collective picture of the how, how drug is performing, and on average, that kind of algorithm. Yeah, that's a very good point. So... It could be like this. So imagine in that case, you are talking, imagine that's the people with the Alzheimer, okay? So we have like a thousand Alzheimer patients. So we can develop individual digital, that would be one scenario. That's, yeah, yeah. You can develop individual with digital twin, AIDT, let's call it, for individual patients. So you receive a lot of data from individual patients. Uh, the tests that they, they do regularly, the historical data and so on. And then by using that AI digital twin, you can monitor the progress of the diseases and so on. And then you can generate a commu uh, commu uh, kind of a aggregated digital twin, which is the aggregate, which receives all the data from all the patients to do, to generate a bigger picture and perspective of whatever is happening for example, you have an idea. You imagine you hypothesize 10 minute walk per day can help people with Alzheimer to slow down the progress of diseases. And then that aggregated AI digital twin, including of the data of a thousand individual digital twins and their results and so on, can be fed to that aggregated one. And then you can get a bigger picture of what kind of recommendation has worked or not. So it can be applied to the case you were talking about. It can be applied to... Uh, smart cities. It can be applied to anything like that. Oh, fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. And we have another question from Gerard here. What digital twin platform, for example, Unity are recommended and what AI platform, uh, for example, GPT-4? That's a very good question. <laughs> so you have loads of uh, possibilities here, Gerard. So for example, that's up to your data. If the objective is to do kind of a predictive analysis, at the back end of your digital twin, you start thinking, what is the best approach to do the predictive analysis? If you want to invest heavily on the algorithms to do more kind of the sophisticated predictive analysis, you can go for more sophisticated AI machine learning algorithm, something like graph convolutional network, which we have uh, introduced in another Lighthouse project. It has a really crazy power in doing predictive analysis, okay? But sometimes you compromise, you say, okay, for the problem that I'm discussing, a very simple predictive analysis approach, AI approach at the back end is enough. I don't need to spend time, energy, money, people and on developing something crazy, which I don't need that, okay? That's the same for the front end. In the front end, what is your purpose? So one of the most important steps in designing, let's say design, not development, uh, a digital twin, AI digital twin is to design your objectives. You should come up with your objective. Your objective tells you what kind of technology you would need in the back end, what is your front end, how to get the data, how often to get the data, what is your data fusion approach, and so, so on. So Yelin will cover three cases in the next three weeks. So in the next three section, you would say, you would see how they have selected different approach to solve, to address that specific use case. I hope it could address your question, Jara. Any other question you may have, guys? Okay, looks like we don't have any questions. Thanks everybody for attending. Thanks for questions. Thanks for participation. We will come back to you uh, tomorrow, hopefully with the question uh, for the homework and the teams, everybody. Please feel free to join the community and discuss paste your knowledge information with everybody in the class. We will try to provide you access with the recordings also, not immediately, but at some stage we will try to do that for your future usage. 
And if there is no question, we can see you next session, next Thursday at 3 p.m. I'll leave it to you, Yelin, to close the session. Yes, yes. Okay. See you. Thanks, Alirida. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.